I'm going to take a few minutes to show you an overview of Backup Exec 22. And this is installed on a Windows 2022 server. So when you start it up, you you end up at the home screen, as you see here. And there's a lot of different options in this dashboard home screen. What you can do is you can check or uncheck a lot of these different boxes, and it'll change the way things look on your screen. So if you don't want to see all these different boxes, you can uncheck some of them or you can choose the uh, reset and it'll take you right back to where you were. You can also change the columns. So by default, you see two columns. You can go with one long column if you'd like or change the three columns, that kind of thing. Let's go on to backup and restore. So here is my server. After doing the installation, it automatically added the agent to the local server itself. And from here, I can go ahead and choose backup. I can choose backup to the cloud, and there's multiple options there. Backup to disk. I've already got a disk ready to go. You can also convert to virtual machine and do other things that you see here. One of the new things you can do now is Microsoft 365 backup options. And you could also just do a one-time backup just by clicking there. Creating a disaster recovery disk is always a good idea because it'll allow you to boot off that disk and take you right to the backup job if you have some sort of a crash. When you go to the backup monitor, this is where you're going to see backup jobs after they run. And also while they're running, you can take a look and see how things are going at that time. If we click on storage, you can see I don't have any storage yet, but in an upcoming video, I'm going to go ahead and add the storage. I'm going to add both cloud storage as well as local storage so you can see the difference between the two. And then, of course, you'll be able to get reports, and you can also do what's called instant cloud recovery, which, once again, is not quite configured, but will be in upcoming videos. Now, if you click in the circle in the upper left-hand corner, this is an area that you really need to pay attention to because it's going to allow you to set up your backup exec, such as with the job defaults. Job defaults give you an option where all these specific features are set a certain and you can go in and edit those if you'd like, but by default, if you don't make any changes, then whatever way this is set up, that's the way each backup is going to be set up. So you can see, for instance, it's going to do a full backup first and then an incremental after that. But if you'd rather do a differential, you could change that to differential, which is a different type of backup, which I explained in other videos. Then you can go to where it says storage. Now, this is an area that I really like to make sure I have this set up right. So you want to see how long you're going to keep those full backups. By default, it's only two weeks. You may not even want to back it up uh, every two weeks. You may back it up monthly or, or longer than that on the full side. So you can certainly change that information here if you'd like. Compression will, if you're running short on space, will compress data, but it does take longer to run that compression, and it can use the software to run that compression if you'd like. It's recommended, of course, to use encryption, and I'll have a video that shows you how to set that up. Uh, there is a certificate involved, so there is some extra setup, which I'm not going to show in this overview. Notifications are really nice because it allows you to, to send an email, and you can do this through Microsoft 365 or an Exchange server or any other type of email server to let the administrator know that the backup job is complete and whether or not there are any problems. Test runs are a good idea when you're first setting things up. Verify by default is going to be turned on. I don't like to use verify because sometimes the verification bleeds into the next night's job because it takes so long. So you may want to just turn, turn off the verification or choose after job finishes as a separate job. So what that does is it keeps the next backup job, it keeps it running rather than stopping it because you're only allowed a certain amount of backup jobs at the same time. And if you choose it as a separate job, then it won't keep other jobs from running back up. You can also choose Instant GRT, which makes things run a little bit faster because it doesn't collect quite the same amount of information. And that is turned on by default. If you're having any problems, though, you can go ahead and run the full catalog option instead. And that will give you a catalog of all the different uh, backup files that were done. And you can also run that as a separate job. Advanced open file, of course, you should always have on. It'll automatically back up any open files uh, that the users may have. We have the advanced disk-based backup option, which is going to move the processing power from the existing server to the server that you're backing up, but only if that server has extra available uh, CPU cycles. If it looks like it's going to be causing a problem, then you may decide to fail the backup job or continue 
continue the backup job without using the off host backup feature. So that's totally up to you. We've got some pre and post commands that you can run. I typically don't use these myself, but you can have certain jobs run after or before the main job you're running. When you click on file and folder options, I like to choose the backup method by archive bit rather than modified time, uh, because what that'll do is it will only back up files that have changed since the last backup, and then it will clear the archive bit uh, depending on the type of backup that you're using. And you have Enterprise Vault, Linux, Active Directory, uh, other things like that. These all have default setup that I feel are just fine the way they are but you can certainly go in and make changes to those if you'd like. It also includes SharePoint, SQL, and other things as well. Once you have that set the way you want, you can click OK, and the next time you create a backup, it will use these defaults. So once again, you can make edits to those defaults if you'd like to, and you may certainly do that in certain occasions. But for the most part, setting it up this way will help make creating new jobs run much more quickly. So that is an overview of Backup Exec 22. I'll be doing all different kinds of demonstrations on all the different options. Take a look at the playlist to see them as I create them.